Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is, uh, this video, this Quranic conversation is part two of the previous Quranic conversation where we talked about Moses, prophets, Moses, Harun, and the Israelites and the fact that the goal for them when they presented the matter to Pharaoh was to lead the Israelites out of Egypt in order for them to perform Hajj or pilgrimage in the wilderness, in the true Mecca, the true Kaaba, the house that had been established by Abraham way before. You just have to orient yourself. We are talking about a time when Torah had not been revealed yet. So there is no Christianity, there is no Judaism, and there is no Islam. None of these religions existed back then. So it's pure monotheism, it's a religion of Abraham that Isaac, uh, Ishmael, uh, Jacob, and Jethro, and Job, they followed, and Joseph, they followed, and Moses at this point is the follower of that religion, and the Torah has not been revealed yet. So we are talking about that time. So we are going to continue. If you have not watched this, that video, you have to go back and watch that video. Otherwise, you're going to be lost and you're going to be making comments that do not make sense. So please go back, watch that video. This video is part two or the continuation of that conversation. So it's very important that you have watched the first part or part one before you jump into uh, the middle of this conversation and watch this one. Uh, so without further ado, let's start with, uh, with, uh, with this Quranic conversation. So I'm going to be talking about the death of uh, Maryam. Maryam was uh, Prophet Moses and Harun's older sister. Quran briefly talks about Maryam and the fact that uh, he goes to the Pharaoh's wife uh, when uh, Moses is taken out of the water. So that is, she is Maryam. Her name was Maryam. And she was considered a preacher of the Lord uh, and a prophetess. It means she was in high regards. And she was held in very, very high esteem. And that's why uh, Maryam, the mother of Esau, Jesus Christ also was named after that original Maryam. It, that is, they, it, it's, uh, Imran, her father, was hoping that her daughter would be as righteous and as pious as uh, Moses' sister, uh, whose name was Maryam. So we are going to be looking at uh, book, uh, book of Numbers, verse number 20, uh, uh, 21, chapter 20, number 1. And the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin. So remember, in that verse, we talked about it. What did Moses say to Pharaoh? That we want to go to perform Hajj in the wilderness. So it's talking about this wilderness, wilderness of Zin. In the first month, so right off the bat, you know which month this is, right? This is Rabi ul Awwal, or the first month of spring. Rabi ul Awwal means first month of spring. So this is in uh, around uh, anywhere between March 20th to April 20th, it's the first month of spring. And the people stayed where? The people stayed in Kadesh. So the people stayed in Kadesh, and people... Uh, lingered in Kadesh for as long as they lingered. We are going to get to that later on. And Miriam, they call Mir which is Maryam, and Maryam died there and was buried there. So Maryam died in Kadesh. And where is Kadesh? Kadesh is in the wilderness of Zin. So that's, I think, a given right now, right? So I wrote that for you here. Kadesh which is in the wilderness of Zin. So Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. 
So now let's look at Numbers, uh, chapter, the book of Numbers, chapter 33, verse number 36 to 38. It says, And they set out from Asian Geber and camped in the wilderness of Zin. That is Kadesh. So if you, this is not my addition. So this parenthesis is not my addition. This is actually in the Bible. This is in the Bible. I will tell you if it's my addition. So this is in the Bible. So we just learned from the verse above that Kadesh is in the wilderness of Zin. So this, this verse again in the book of Numbers is verifying that Allah is giving us another witness that Kadesh is the other name for the wilderness of Zin. It's a big wilderness. There is not much in it except for Kadesh. So the wilderness of Zin is recognized, is known, is identified by this place named Kadesh. It's a city named Kadesh. It says, and they set out from Kadesh. This is later. At this point, Maryam has already died. They have lived in Kadesh for years. So Maryam has already passed away. So, and they set out from Kadesh. So the Lord, our Lord, our Creator, Allah, commands Moses and Harun to leave Kadesh. So they set out from Kadesh and they camped at Mount Hor. So I want you to keep that in mind, Mount Hor. Where is Mount Hor? It says Mount Hor is on the edge of the land of Edom. So Mount Hor divides the land of Eden from the land of the Israelites, from the south of the land of Israel. It's at the edge is Mount Hor. On the edge of the land of Eden. And Aaron, or Harun, the priest, again, remember, Harun is a prophet, but Allah calls him a priest in the Bible. Why? I dis discussed that with you in my previous video, if you watched it. Jethro is also Allah's messenger of God, but Allah calls him the high priest because a true priest of the Lord is indeed Allah's messenger. If he, someone is a true priest of the, I'm not talking about the priests that that, uh, that exist nowadays, but a true priest of the Lord. The Book of Malachi tells us that a true priest, a real priest, a, a original priest of the Lord. Is, is actually a messenger of Allah. So an Arun the priest at this point went up Mount Hor. So what is Mount Hor is known today as Jabal Harun or the Mount of Harun. So Harun goes up Mount Hor at the command of Allah, at the command of the Lord. And Allah takes his soul and Harun dies on top of Mount Hor. What mountain is he talking about? He's talking about Jabal Harun in Petra, Jordan, at the edge of the border of current day Israel and Jordan. So Marun, Harun goes on top of that mountain and dies there. Even as of today, Prophet Harun's tomb is up there and there's a beautiful mosque over there. It's a beautiful place with gorgeous views and uh, it's about 16 miles west of uh, Petra. You have to go about 16 miles west of Petra. So this happened in the 40th year, in the 40th year after the people of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt. On the first day of the fifth month. So this is almost equivalent to summer so prophet harun passes away somewhere between july 20th to august 20th in arabic they call that the month of rajab so it's the fifth month of a solar year it always is at the same time it never rotates remember so that's the time that's the time that prophet harun passes away in the summer right so what do you understand from these verses that people of the Israel, the Israelites together with prophets Moses and Harun and their sister Maryam lived in the wilderness of Zin in the city of Kadesh For a very long time, 40 years has passed at this point. 
So of, of course, at the beginning, there were some times that they were marching and coming. But at the end of that 40 years that they were supposed to live in the wilderness before they go to, to enter the land of Israel, they were living where? In the wilderness of Zin. And within that wilderness, in the city of Kadesh. So the, if you read these verses correctly, it's actually telling us. So this is, this is probably, this is the first channel. This is the first person, as far as I know, in this world that is talking about this. I don't know of anyone else who has ever talked about this topic. So the last video and this video. So you're, you're hearing it from me um, for the first time. And if anyone else has ever talked about it, please let me know. I don't know of any. But as far as I know, this is the first time that I'm unveiling this with Allah's permission, with our Creator's permission, because I want to help you understand. I want to help you decode both the Bible and the Quran, because there's a lot of lessons in this. It all ties back to the end time prophecy. That's why I'm emphasizing this. Now, let's look at the next, uh, next slide. Okay, this is again the same verses that we looked at in the book of Numbers. I wanted you to see the Kadesh. I wanted you to see that in Hebrew. So this is Kadesh. As you can see, I have here it says Kadesh. So Kadesh means sanctuary or holy. It's They say a place in the desert. I told you about the safe sanctuary in the end time. If you look at Petra, and the end um, in biblical prophecy, in end time biblical prophecy, in that video, I talked to you about the sanctuary, the holy place of sanctuary in end times. I will put the link down here below so you can go watch that video. There's a lot of lessons, there's a light in these videos. I'm opening up topics that have been hidden for centuries. And inshallah, those of you whom Allah wants their hearts to be guided, wants their hearts to be lit up with his words, they will learn and they will take it to heart. So what does Kadesh mean? Kadesh is a Hebrew word. So what is in Arabic Kadesh? Kadesh is Arabic means Quds. Quds. Quds means holy. So this is a title, there is a title that right now Muslims, um, uh, current day Muslims, give to the city of Jerusalem. They call it Al-Quds. It means the holy, the holy city, the quotes, the sanctuary. Whereas that was that is not the case. This is the title of the city of Kadesh. It's actually the name of the city where the Israelites stayed at for 40 years in the wilderness of Zin. And the sign of this city. Listen to this. The sign of this city. Allah has put a sign for us. Is the tomb of Prophet Harun at the, at the top of a mountain. So which city is it talking about? It's the city of Petra. The actual, the original name of the city of Petra. Before it was named Mecca. Before it was the Ummul Qura. Was Kadesh or Quds or Holy Sanctuary. That is its original name. Let me show something to you. I told you that the Mount Hor or the Mount or Jabal Harun, as it is called right now in Jordan, is 16 miles away from west of Kadesh, at the border of Jordan and Israel, right? So if you look at it, this verse is telling us the exact same thing. It says, uh, they camped in the wilderness and they set out from Kadesh and camped. So it, it took him a long time. It took him a, so it's a huge number of people. So they actually had to leave Petra on foot and go to the wilderness, go to Mount Hor or Jabal Harun. And that's exactly the verse what the verse is telling us. The verse is telling us that Mount Hor or Jabal Harun is some distance away from Kadesh, which is Petra. I want to make I want to make sure this this is Bible is a navigation system. Is a map. It's just telling you everything. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. 
He's telling you the details. They have tried to change it, but they there's so much light hidden in this book. So much light. So, I hope this is clear at this point. I could not really spend much more time on it. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is Book of Numbers again. Chapter 20, verse 20 to 29. Again, this telling us that this is the third witness. And they journeyed from Kadesh. So from Kadesh, you have to journey. And I told you it's 17 miles west of Kadesh. Which back then, it would take a while. Nowadays, we have cars and SUVs. You just uh, zip through it. But back then, it wasn't the case. You were, people were walking. And the people of Israel, the whole congregation came to where? Came to Mount Hor. Now, this is my edition. This is not Bible. So, this is, I have added it. So, Mount Hor, which is currently, as we know, known as Jabal Harun which is located close to Petra, Jordan, is 16 miles west of it. So, uh, this is my addition, this parenthesis, okay? And here, this is here, that and the Lord said to Moses and Harun at Mount Hor, on the border of the land of Edom, let Harun be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land. So, uh, you can read the rest of it for the sake of time. I don't read the rest of it. It's beautiful. It's the word of Allah, our Lord. Okay, so I, I already mentioned all these points in this slide. If you want, please stop it and look at it yourself. But I mentioned all these points. One thing I want to mention that I didn't mention is that both Petra, which is Valley of Bacca or Mecca, and also its original name is Kadesh or Quds, and Jabal Harun or Mount Hor, were of extreme importance to the believers at the time of prophets David and Solomon, there were frequent pilgrimages or hajj occurring to that area from all over the state of Israel back then in the ancient Israel, the northern tribe and the southern tribe. People used to do pilgrimage uh, to Kadesh before the temple at Jerusalem was built. So that's where people used to go. In fact, and, and it was Prophet Solomon who built the temple in, 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 in Jerusalem. That's why if you go read on Psalm 84, Psalm 26, Psalm 42, Prophet David in those Psalms is clearly talking about Bacca. Actually, it mentions the valley of Bacca or Kadesh and house of Allah. It says Bet Elohim. It means house of Allah. And performing tawaf in there. Actually, Prophet uh, David describes the whole Hajj process and pinpoints the location for us. I have another video. I'm going to put the link down below so you can watch that as well. But, this, but, but the proof is not only in the scripture. For me, the Quran, the Bible is enough. I'm done. I, 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 I'm 100% secure. In my belief, I know I believe in the right thing, but there's historical sources that also confirm that. So let's look at some of these historical sources. Uh, one of them is Josephus, which is a major, major Jewish historian right after uh, Jesus Christ, Isa, son of Mariam. And there's also Jerome, there's Eusebius, Yusub, but I'm just going to focus on Josephus because it's the earliest historian that exists and talks about it. So, Josephus, at this point, is talking about, at 37 to 100 CE, is talking about uh, the same story, the story of uh, Harun and Moses and Mariam. And uh, let's see what Josephus tells us. I'm just going to read the highlighted part. It says, when he came to a place which the Arabians, it means the Arabs, esteem their metropolis. So, this place is the metropolis of the Arabs. It's the mother of all city, which was formerly called Ars, but has now the name of Petra. So Petra, we know from Josephus, a hundred years after the common era, 100 CE, was the metropolis of the Arabs. At this place, which was encompassed with high mountains, Harun went up one of them in the sight of the whole army. Moses 
having before told him that he was about to die. For this place was over against them. So again, as you can see, Petra was the Arabian metropolis and the capital, or just as the Quran calls it, was Ummul Ghura, mother of the Arabian cities. Josephus lived almost Josephus, uh, Josephus uh, lived almost 600 years before Prophet Muhammad. He was a Jewish scholar and historian, uh, and he was a friend and translator of Titus, the Roman emperor, during the siege of Jerusalem, and is considered a first-hand witness of the events. Of course, not that, not, that, not not of the events I've talked about, but of the events of the destruction of Jerusalem and all those things that happened. So once again, Josephus is talking in, uh, about Rechem here again. And Rechem, who was of the same name with the city, the chief and capital of all Arabia, which is still now so-called by the whole, whole Arabian nation, Arakim, from the name of the king that built it, but is by the Greeks called Petra. One more time, you see that Josephus is calling Petra as the chief city of Arabia, capital of the entire Arabia, and, uh, and the metropolis. So it was the mother of all cities, as the Quran calls it. Now in this part it says, Josephus says, Now Arabia is a country that borders upon Judea. I showed to you Judea is the West Bank. Currently they call Judea the West Bank. Its, its current name that was given to it by the British is West Bank, but its original name is Judea. So, so that area, so it's talk, Josephus is talking about Jordan. So Arabia, the major part of Arabia back then was Jordan. Down there, except for Yemen, there was desert. There was not really much in there. I know later on you had the city of Medina and all these things, but at this time, Arabia, the Original Arabia was Jordan, bordering Judea. I'm going to show you in the map as well. And again, it calls it mother of the cities. The other historical source that actually exists even as of today is the Medaba map. Medaba map is in Jordan. It's in 6th century AD, a map that was um, was was uh, was. Uh, Created in 6th century, it is mosaic. It's located in, a, in the early Byzantine church of St. George in Medaba, Jordan. I actually have been there. I have seen it myself. I've taken a picture of it. It's a beautiful ancient map that existed. It's the oldest surviving map of the Holy Land. By Holy Land, I mean uh, what is known today as, as Israel and Jordan. So, I want to tell you something interesting. Umayyad Caliph, let me show you a picture of the Medaba map first. So, this is the Medaba map. So, just have this in mind. I just want you to see some. So, this is the Dead Sea right here. So, this is the Dead Sea. This, this part, this is the Dead Sea. So, this is the north, this is the south. So, this is the North Israel, North Jordan here. So, this is north, and this is south, right? So, so let's go back uh, to the previous slide and we'll come back to this map again. So Umayyad Caliph, Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan, the son of the devil. So this is a name that I focus on, I concentrate on. This is the person, he was the ally of the devil, ally of Akbar, the devil. So he, in around 700 AD, sent his soldiers. I, in fact, you can go even to St. George church they will tell you this is what they told me in the church they are there the guides actually tell you sent his soldiers and vandalized the map and removed some parts of the mosaic map so can you guess can you guess what parts he removed what part of the map this satanic human being removed if you said Petra, if you said Bekka, if you said Kadesh, if you said En Mishpat, you are correct. So he literally, this Caliph, because of his animosity with Allah and his last prophet and the believers, he literally wanted to erase Petra or the true Mecca off the face of the earth, off the face of the map. So he sent his soldiers 
and they removed and destroyed that part. Big why? Because at this point, Bakka and its sacred mosque, Al Masjid al Haram, had been destroyed by them. He had already destroyed it. And he was replacing it with a new mosque in current day Saudi Arabia, what current day Muslims call Al Masjid al Haram over there. So basically, Umayyads at this point are wiping off the history of this city. They're wiping it off the face of the earth, replacing it with a new city. They're creating a new history. They are rewriting the history at this point. So because of that, all evidence of Petra or Kadesh or Bakka had to be removed. For the next 1300 years, only to be discovered in 1800s, recently. And Allah allowed for that to happen. But that tells you how evil this generation was. Up until then, all the Christians, all the Muslims knew where uh, Petra or Bakka or Kadesh or Quds was until this son of the devil tried to rewrite the history Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan and let me show this to you look so this is one of the parts that he removed so this is this is where Petrov would have been right this is where around here that so he came and his soldiers came and I actually I asked the guide specifically in St. George Church in Madaba, Jordan. I'm like, why Why did they remove this part? And he actually explained it to me, how Abdul Malik Ibn Abbas sent uh, a, 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 a group of his soldiers and commanders. They came and pur purposefully destroyed some part of the map and let the other parts stay. Now let's look at another verse. Deuteronomy 18 says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, a nabi, a nabi, a prophet like me. Like who? Like Moses. So Moses is talking right now. But from, from where? It says from among you, from your brothers. And then later down, in the, in the same verse, it says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. But who are the Israelites' brothers? And where are they located? That's the question. Who are, you know, Muslims, current day Muslims say, oh, it's the Ishmaelites. Are, Ishmaelites are not Israelites' brothers. Ishmael was not Israel's brother, was it? And Christians and Jews, they laugh at that claim. And quite rightly so. I would laugh at that claim as well. Why? Because Ishmael is an uncle to Israel or Jacob. He's not Jacob's brother. Who is Jacob's brother? Jacob's brother is Esau. Whose other name is Edom. So let's but 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 don't accept it from me. In the same book, in the same book, Allah tells us who the brothers are. Let's look at it together. So we looked at Deuteronomy 18. This is Deuteronomy 2. So I'm gonna read the highlighted parts. It says, For many days we traveled around Mount Seir. Right? Then the Lord said to me, I've been traveling around. I'm not good for the sake of time, I don't want to read the whole thing. You can read it, you can pause the video, you can read yourself. It says, you are about to pass through the territory of who? Of your brothers. Who are your brothers? Allah gives us the definition. The people of Esau who live in Seir, in Mount Seir. Or Seir. And they will be afraid of you. So be very careful. Do not contend with them. For I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as for the sole of the foot to tread on. Because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. And then later on, as I've told you, Allah gives us several witnesses. 
because that wants to make sure that people cannot change it. So, so we went on away from who? From our brothers. So Israelites are saying that. So we went on away from our brothers, the people of Esau who lived in Seir. So the Christians and the Jews are correct in laughing and at current day Muslims for claiming that Prophet Muhammad was a son of uh, was was an Ishmaelite was down there. That's not correct. The, this is the Edomite. So he's talking about Edomites. So this chapter clearly identifies the people of Esau who were known as the Edomites, as the Israelites' brother. So who were the Israelites' brothers? It, it, they were the Edomites. So as you see, uh, Moses mentions that he. The, the prophet would be like Moses, being lawgiver, nation builder. Moses tells Israel and clearly emphasizes twice that the promised prophet would be from your brothers. Now, who was Israel's brothers? Esau, whose children were the Edomites, correct? So Esau married his uncle Ishmael's daughter. So Esau settled down where Ishmael was and they intermingled together. So that Edomites are the children of Ishmael and, uh, and Esau together. Throughout history, the Edomite controlled the area south of the Dead Sea in Jordan, including Petra. Sometimes it was contracted, lack of water, the wars, and sometimes they expanded actually in the territory of Israel. So there was contractions and expansions. I want you to keep that in mind. Prophet Muhammad came from Petra from among the Edomites, but the the Umayyads tried to rewrite the history and change it. And is technically Prophet Muhammad is a descendant of both Isaac and Ishmael. So let me show you the map. And this is the map of the region. I've showed this to you before. You see the Kingdom of Edom. You see at this point they had an expansion. They had gone actually during the weakness within the the Israelites, they had been divided into two kingdoms, northern kingdom, southern kingdom. And you see this was uh, this is the Edomites, land of Moabites and Ammonites. And we talked about the prophecy of prophet Daniel that talks about Jordan and that all these three will be united at the end times. And the Ammonites will be ruling all these three nations. They will be the chiefs or the leaders. Again, you see the same thing. This is the Edomites, this is Petra. And this is where prophet, this is the this is Moses' prophecy that the last prophet will come from Petra, from Kadesh. And that's where they were passing. And uh and uh it has nothing to do uh, with South with Saudi Arabia and the South of those places didn't even exist back then. So this is all that's that's the Umayyad history. Uh, the current day Islam, what you see as Sunni Islam and Shia Islam, original Shia Islam is 100% different than current day Shia Islam. But uh, what you have currently as these two religions, the Umayyad Islam, it's the Umayyad religion, it's the religion of Abu Sufyan, religion of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, it's the religion of the Umayyads. It's the same thing that happened in Christianity. It's the same thing that happened in Judaism as well. So they changed, they rebelled, they were the allies of the devil. And they changed it and they worship Akbar um, and all kinds of uh, idols over there uh, in, uh, in, uh, what they, in, in what in, in current day Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Anyway, peace and blessings to all, uh, all of you. I, I, I really hope you're learning from this. There's a lot of light in here. Uh, I, and I'm sharing these with you. And I'm hoping and praying that you will learn. Your eyes will become open and you will see the truth of our Lord our creator and the truth of his word and you will uh, hopefully that humbles your heart uh, just like it humbles my heart towards him peace and blessings to all of you